What is good? We're back. Oh, there we go. Quick pop. Let's go. We got old Jay Wayne. Void of the tripod here for the last few episodes, but fear not. Hey, we're pumping them out. There will be a tripod once again very shortly. So Matt's on uh, baby duty. He's going to be very upset that he's going to miss buy, sell, hold Tyler Algaia. We're gonna Especially do some, with the stance that I think we're both about to take. We're going to do some buy sells here. Rattle off a couple for your pleasure. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. And the uh, the Patreon is on and popping. Uh, we got mock drafts and we got our own ADP. And we got, we'll got we have rookie ranks after the draft and all sorts of good stuff. If you've been fucking with, fucking with us for a while, you better get this dick. <laughs> give us that $5 holler over Finna there. Give me this dick. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that, you can uh, you can like and subscribe to the channel and give us a five-star review on the pod. We appreciate y'all. All right, yeah. let's jump into it here. I'm going to give you my dick. <laughs> uh, Have you seen that Paul Rudd? I don't even uh-uh. know what movie that is. Uh-uh. He's just staring in the mirror, like pumping himself up about <laughs> he's about to give her this dick. <laughs> you going to take that dick? Huh? I'm going to pop off a piece of my dick. Sounds familiar, but I'm drawing a blank on the. Well, it was like a, they people took that sound clip and they made a bunch of like reels and shit out, like Instagrams shit out of it, uh, and, and like we're mouthing it, you know, and like doing something ridiculous. But <laughs> it's Paul Rudd, just probably just freestyling on the camera. Love some Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. All right, so got some buy sells here, and this uh, all kind of percolated off of just percolate. Me. Me thinking out loud of uh, you have Tyler Algier here, and and we can throw we can kind of throw Damian Pierce in this spectrum as well. That you know both both kind of guys that you know people had cult heroes of um, cult, not cult. They they both had their time where they rose and fall fell a little bit, and and now we're at the point where you know Damian Pierce had Singletary come in and Mike Boone career backup, and you know I like Singletary. I think Singletary's you know pretty good um but you know damian pierce i think might have been the best case scenario for him like i don't don't think that they're necessarily going to spend the capital on a running back at this point they filled out the position they filled it out pretty cheap them bringing in devin singletary was one of the better situations best outcomes for damian pierce is what you're saying sort of i mean i'm not saying that devin singletary won't take some from damian pierce I, i think he absolutely will but I don't think I, I I personally, and this is where me and Matt, you know, differ a little bit, and and the cult uh, followings differ a little bit. I personally think Pierce ha- showed me a lot of special parts and pieces to the game last year, being on a, on a really crappy team. But there was some really eye popping, great stuff from Pierce that that made him sort of undeniable. And then they you know went behind him, got a good backup in in Boone, who's been a career backup for the most part, and is good you know if you need him. And then Singletary, who can give you some spot duty, give Pierce a rest. If anything happens to Pierce, your game doesn't fall off tremendously. So, you know, I really like what they did there. Um, But I don't think it hurts Damian Pierce too much. And I think to me, it says, hey, we don't need to really invest in the draft at all uh, if they don't want to. Now, maybe you know, Ryan's comes from this the San Francisco kind of tree and there's other guys on that staff. And I'm not saying they won't add a sixth, seventh, maybe even fifth rounder on, on the on the team. Maybe they do. Uh, but it seems like a lot more steady of a, of a cutout role here. And now you could be saying, well, Casey, Algier, they didn't do anything. Well, I think that, that to me throws up a flag of saying, this is real, either really awesome or the thing I lean more towards is that they have a plan that they're drafting another running back. The way they, you know... Uh, use their running backs last year was you know Huntley and and Algier were both pretty much splitting carries and uh, Patterson uh, is, is still around and still in the mix and until Huntley went down Algier really didn't take necessarily command of the out was still good but you know was still in the 10 
11 carries, couldn't command the offense. Now, maybe they saw enough and they're, and they're saying, hey, we're going to give this backfield to Algier. But a lot of Bijan talks over there. It just seems like they could. And again, maybe they're, they're, they're cut from the cloth. The Arthur Smith of, hey, we, we're, we're fine with playing this style of football that isn't the most sexy that the, the pundits, the analytical people aren't going to love. But, hey, we were in a lot of games last year. If we could just get a little bit better quarterback play and just a little bit better defense, you know, we could muddy this up and be in there. But to me, it's leaving the door wide open for them to invest in the first, second uh, day running back. So, you know, bringing up the point of should you be trying to unload Algier before that happens? Now, if it doesn't happen, then stock through the roof for Algier, you know, but... I think playing the odds and the percentages here, the way that that the way that Pierce's backfield played out, and the way that Singleton and they the, the Falcons have a ton of cap, so it's not like they're hamstrung by you know not bringing in, not being able to pay one of these running backs. So to me, it says, hey, we have a plan of of maybe we're going to invest some decent capital in the running back positions, making Algier a a priority sell for me. I think right now. Yeah, so and it's not an indictment on Algier. I think he's a good player. Uh, you know, he definitely showed that that he's a good player and can handle volume. And they 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 I don't featured think he's him. They featured him at the end of the year for sure. Which is, you know, was that him or was that just the product of that environment and what they wanted to do? It did kind of keep him in games and keep games close and and not let teams get too far away with it. You know, and playing good defense and that's what Arthur Smith wants wants to do. I think you made a great point. He dodged all these bullets in free agency, right? A lot of free agent running backs. They didn't sign like anyone, right? Mm -hmm. So his value hasn't taken a hit. If anything, it's like, see, they didn't bring anybody in. It it could, right? It could be potentially in some suitors eyes glowing red right now. Right. So you could probably capitalize to the right guy. Right. Now you probably had to spend a million. draft capital elitists are still gonna just be right. Yeah. Well, you find I mean, but in your home leagues, right? Everyone needs a running back or not, and they want to win. Non- Twitter. That's what I'm saying. In your home leagues that aren't Twitter and they're not even like draft capital isn't a word that usually comes out of their fucking mouths. You know right. what I mean? Right. They're just one like starter running back away from being the best, right? And it's like, hey. Sometimes I, I hear people, I'm like, y'all, you should settle down. You should be a little more honest with your team and don't just go overpay for this running back. But that's typically happens, right? Mm-hmm. You got to find a, thir- a, a running back thirsty guy who's active right now. You probably could go get, I mean, what can you go get? You, you, you probably can't squeeze that late first out of him. I mean, maybe to the right guy with a, with a little extra in there, you might be able to, to figure out how to facilitate a first if he's down on the class and... Would you, know, you give back the two to get the first? The one for Algier? It depends. I guess it probably depends on what this two was and what the what the one was. But in in a fundamental system of, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be fine with trying to get up into the first for out Al, with, with Algier and, uh, you know, maybe start with a third, a third in Algier, try to get up into the first if I can, which, you know, some people are probably laughing right now saying there's no way that that would ever happen. Well, I, I, I think that that could happen, especially right now. That's kind of what I'm saying is that there isn't much competition right now. And if somebody isn't thinking that way, then, you know, they're saying, hey, I, I knew Algier was the guy and he is the guy. So I'm going to buy Algier right now. And I don't like any of their running backs at the back half of the second round. Um, so, you know, for sure. I mean, or, or you know, would you rather have Tal- Tyler Algier right now, or would you rather have Cam Akers right now? Man, I do not know what to do with Cam Akers, I guess. I mean, to me, Cam Akers is a buy, too. He seems like he could be a league winner. Um, yeah, because they don't have draft capital to spend on anybody. Who knows what's going to happen there, but, you know. Not uh, the they, 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 did, they did. They have sort of come up with some capital here uh, with with some dealings. A little bit. Um, they did get rid of uh, Rams. Ramses. I guess I'd rather have Acres. Party. I'd rather have Acres. Would you move off Algier for Montgomery and a pick? Maybe not. Yeah, see, I, I'm okay with I I think I, I feel more secure in Montgomery moving forward than I do Algier. And and like I said, this could be the wrong play. They maybe they say, Hey, we're good. 
We like our 220 pound guy. He's built like a workhorse. I come, I come from the Derrick Henry school, Arthur Smith, and we're going to ride the dog shit out of our big, uh, workhorse able back here but it just seems like it's wide open for them to take that big time running back that they really like that that is maybe a little more uh athletic than algier is and a little sexier um yeah i'm having a hard time with montgomery i, I do think use, he's a good buy i don't know if, if you could use algier to get up to tony pollard in one way or another would you do that yeah, and then try to sell Tony Pollard because we're, <laughs> but I we're going to talk about Tony Pollard here in a minute. Are we? Maybe. I agree, though. I would If I could figure out a way to get from Algier to Pollard with a pick combination or another player combination, I, I have absolutely no uh, problem doing that. So he went 11-3 here in this draft. This is one we did with the the patrons. I got uh, at, oh, I got, I'm on the other draft. You're on the other I got one. him at 10-3. That was one of the one public ones that we threw out to the public so if you follow us on twitter at the ff dynasty we're going to throw out some mocks to join just because we want to get more than just our patrons into some of this adp that I think we're collecting I took them in this other one uh you did you took them in 11 three uh Cor again corlin sutton and trey mcbride had just gone off the right, board right you would i would rather have both of those players i think uh tight end premium yeah yeah for the most part sure um what about james cook we talked about him in the last show. Right. And, and it's the same sort of deal. I, I trust the ecosystem of the running backs somewhat. In Atlanta? For Atlanta, although they, they, they did seem like they wanted to, they were fine with splitting things. And then when they were out of options, they gave it to Algier and he did, he did his thing. I think I'd rather have Algier than Cook, but... Um, yeah, Cook, you can't see in, on this screen here, but he went 12-11 which was a whole almost two rounds late after Nine, Algier 12. here. Well, I'm looking at the one I'm showing them is the, the Patreon draft. Oh, oh, oh. It was before the one you're looking at. Well, I'm looking um, at that one. 11-3 11, 11, Algier went. Mm -hmm. James Cook was 12-11, so that's almost two rounds 12, later. 12-11 is not a... Big Coat took him. He, that's, that's kind of... That's a good value for James Cook. I mean, 12-11... Well, I well that's what I was that, like, starting to drive at is I like the cost for both of those guys right, right there. I have no problem... Uh, I'll take Algier, and if something happens where they do draft another guy, I'll eat it. That's fine. Uh, but I, I I like the value of both James Cook and, and Algier, but if somebody – it seems like there's an opportunity, there's an open selling window where somebody might be a little more hot on the Algier trail than, than I am. So I, I'd be willing to uh, – I think that's a that's a sell, priority sell for me right now. If you can get an early two, we've had this – talk yeah I'm fine. I'm fine i'm fine with the early two for me because i like a lot of those early two i like a bunch of those running backs and we, we, we've had the discussion I tyler think, algier four four two like for like throughout the season yeah. into the off season and and matt's usually if i could get two out here all day sure, I'll, I'll ship them off i'm usually like i think i want the two and then you you go you kind of it sways a little bit yeah but i like a lot of those i like uh, you know, I like the Zach Evans and the Kendry like, Miller. You know, and Izzy just really helped the stock out Canada. today, seemingly. Oh, it's and a pro day. Kendra, uh, I like him, and I, I've liked Spears. Chase C Brown. I think there'll be enough guys that get good enough draft capital to make me feel good about that early second uh, round running back area, and 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 a wide receiver or two, and Hendon Hooker, and you know Hendon Hooker, and the two tight ends. Uh, maybe three, you know, so there's enough in that range where, you know, I'm pretty excited about uh, grabbing, you know, Dalton, uh, you know, Kincaid, Kincaid or, or Mayer. Mayer or, you know, maybe Washington Parker. gets up there. Um, no. Darnell. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be I'd be fine with two one to to chip Algier off. Who, who do you want to go to next? You want to um, do Purdy? Let's go Lance? Brock Purdy. Let's go Brock Purdy and we can kind of throw Lance in there. And for me, just to go back real quick, I, I would, I'd be, I'm buying Pierce, selling Algier. And that's, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of the way I've been looking at God, it. Yeah, they're like, it took us to the 15 minute mark for you to just tell us if you're <laughs> buying or selling. Um, all right. So Purdy and Lance, I feel like you got, you know, you get a good opportunity for either either here. Um, you know, there's a little bit of news with Purdy being like the guy. In yeah, the room right now. Who, who's the GM? Uh, John Lynch. Lynch. John, John Lynch. Lynch uh, 
you know, kind of came out and said that, you know, Purdy's kind of earned it. And, mm-hmm. and they think that, you know, if right now that Purdy's a starter, yada, yada, yeah, yada. Like never lost the game. I'm not holding that last so, one against him. I've, the injury. I've, I've been drafting him a lot of the times in these in these leagues. Uh, in these, yeah, you took him here at eight four, uh, and that that one uh, that's the non Patreon one, correct right there, um, and that those the quarterback values got sucked up a little bit, and I was kind of in a spot where I, I kind of needed another one, and I feel fine. He went nine nine in the mock before that about taking him, and then you know he's he's usually somewhere between the late eighth and the middle tenth, um, is, is kind of where you see him. And I'm, basically, it comes down to when he goes off the board. He's he's you now that that eight eight or whatever it was was a little early for, for what I would like to to see Purdy at currently. Um, but you know, <clears throat> and I still don't think that's terrible value. There's just by the time he goes off the board, there's not that many better assets available mm-hmm. long term. Than, than Purdy, so I, you know, I, I'm, I, I would still very much be buying Purdy if Purdy goes out there and is the starting quarterback for the Niners mm. and can can average you 18 points a game. Um, well, if if it was a guarantee that he was going to be the starter for the Niners and, and Lance wasn't right. going to be, then I mean, not that their ADP is going to flip because Lance is still like pretty much going in the second round or or third fourth round. round. Oh, he goes fourth round. Mm-hmm. Is he fourth in both of these? He went third in this other one, three two, so he he ranges from the end of two to fourth. That that might switch, you know. Well, I think it would. Purdy cert- wouldn't be a fourth round. Pick, I think Purdy would certainly be in that. Cousins picket. Uh, I think he would certainly be in the four range. to six range. Yeah, and that's why I'm buying Purdy because I think it's inevitable one way or another he's going to be the starter for some team, and it seems like it's going to be the Niners if he if he can get healthy and get right enough to get back on the field. Now, it, it may be a month before you actually see Brock Purdy playing into the season. Um, that potentially. long. I don't know. We'll see. I don't. You don't want to rush him. Yeah. You want to make sure he's right. That's why you brought Sam Darnold in. Um, and you don't know what's going to happen with Lance. And it's not, an, again, I've been saying this word a lot, it's not an indictment on Lance. Two things can be true. Purdy came in and played really well. Lance didn't necessarily lose the job. He just got fucking hurt. Like... He played in a monsoon and then he got hurt. Like right. I, I don't know what you want from the guy. Like I'm not I'm not necessarily saying I'm bailing on Trey Lance either. I still think there's something there. And obviously I've been dying to see the, the Niners with a rushing quarterback. A running quarterback. And I think, you know, they they want to break down that fucking fourth wall or the third wall or whatever the hell it is. The fourth dimension. Um, you know, and, and get Sixth that sense. Get that running quarterback to just be so multiple on every single level that it's really, you know, they, they brought in McCaffrey and you got de- now like it's just gangbusters now all of a sudden. And Purdy can run. You just saw Purdy as a fucking seventh round rookie be able to run this offense and, and be getting comfortable in it. So why wouldn't you move forward? Purdy's a buy. Values going up. Uh, he is he going to be awesome and, and be a top six super flex quarterback? No, but I think if <coughs> I think the value is right, and I think he can stay right in there and be a nice QB two yeah. for you because we're just you know you go and you look at the landscape twos, and, and that I have no problem buying Brock Purdy right now at all, and then Trey Lance, you know, well, what are you buying Brock Purdy for? Any any anything with a two for sure. Can you know, that happen? Let's see where he is in DLF ADP. Um, I, I'll 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 buy him. He's at one eleven, so that's like end of the tenth. Yeah. So if I could buy him for a, a second round, Josh Downs is going right after him. Tyler Algier is going right after him. If I could buy him for anything in, with a two in front of it, or I would. Algier. I mean, sure. Um, Damian Pierce. Uh, probably, I'd probably sell Purdy for or Pierce for Purdy. Um. I'm okay with that. I just, you know, it, it's hard to get one. And if if Purdy stays the starter for the Niners for the next couple of years, he's James proved he Cook. can run that offense. Oh, all day, all day long. Yeah. Um, Friar move tight end premium. That gets a little interesting, but probably, probably I'll, I'll take Purdy. All right. Um. So yeah, no, I mean I think Purdy's a buy. And then as far as going over to the Trey Lance side of things. I haven't necessarily lost confidence in him. It's just been a, a, a terrible series of events. And, and, you know, the Niners were built to win and Garoppolo's in there. And then 
Purdy comes in and he's great and Lance is hurt and you know what the hell is he supposed to do? Is he's kind of in a you know, it's almost like it's almost best for him at this point to go somewhere else and just start over, just get a whole fresh start, get a whole like I, I think that where would be like your favorite land? I think the spot Titans are perfect. I think the Titans are perfect. <laughs> like I think that is ideal for Trey Lance. It's not. Huge media circus. It's it's kind of under the radar a little bit. I, I think he could fit right in with what they do. They 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 they're not traditional in how they would run things. They're okay with doing things their own way. They're not going to get caught up in 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 what people want them to do or what everybody is doing. I think he would be that perfect quarterback for them. And and you know I don't think I've drafted Trey Lance in any of these drafts that we've done. I'm very mm. weary of drafting Trey Lance in the third or fourth round right now. Um, uh, so, you know, I guess you could technically say that I'm, I would be selling Trey Lance, um, in, in currently, but it's four, eight is pretty strong value there. Your boy at, JMW right. took him at four, so eight it must be good at four, eight. Uh, not JMW is not my boy, but I could, I could, I it's could always in your mouth. I could loop it back around and and maybe maybe be in on on him at four eight because yeah, you like, are, look at look at who's right. going around you're, you're him. basically Josh in the, Jacobs and Cooper Cup and Diggs. Well, and you're Eckler, in the quarterback so. void too. All the rookie, the CJ Stroud and Bryce Young have gone. Tua's gone. Kyler's gone. Uh, Dak's gone. You know, it's do you want to take Anthony Richardson or do you want to take Trey Lance? Uh, and then it's Golf Cousins. You know, Daniel Jones. So you know. He has more upside than any of those guys left, but he doesn't have the floor that Cousins, Daniel Jones, and Golf currently have because he's just there's a lot of unknown right there. Now, um, three now, two. I do think that there when is. You have Kyle Pitts, Amon Ra, Saquon, Andrews, right, Drake right. London. It gets a lot more difficult to buy Anthony Richardson or Trey. Now, with this Purdy news. Uh, I think there is. I think you. I think there's a nice happy medium here. I think this can be a sell if somebody's hot and heavy on them. But I think there is a nice little buy window in here where I, I, I still feel good about them, good enough about them, about what the fantasy upside could be. But it's just been such a weird scenario uh, that, that I'm, and I, you, you like the landing spot of the Niners so much mm -hmm. and, and, and that ecosystem that, that you're just not sure. Um, things moving on but I, I i would love to see him go to the titans or the colts yeah um you know the raiders would be weird just because it's jimmy g again and him yeah. um <laughs> poor guy you would be like god dang i can't get away from the most handsome man in the world right and then you, you know you would think the redskins but that that seems commanders oh, sorry the commanders um but what yeah the ravens yeah, well, so that was always that that it would be an interesting, uh, but that would have to like come with Lamar, and they're not trading right. for Lamar. They'd have to right. trade away. I, Lamar I've been wanting the Niners Lance. to trade for Lamar, Lamar for this this whole time this has been going you on. You want to pay him? I'm fine. Yeah. How much? So they offered him 133 guaranteed millions for some years. I, this and he seems, didn't want that. I'm not sure what's going on. A lot of semantics seemingly. He seems to be a man of principle and it seems like... So is he going to take less money than he would have taken from the Ravens to just get out of there now because he's mad at them? I, I have no idea. Are no. they colluding against him to not pay him Deshaun money? I don't know that either. Because then if they do, the second person who gets Deshaun money, it's going to fuck everyone. <laughs> right? Because all these quarterbacks are about to get deals, Burrow and Herbert. And I could see the Rich Whites being upset about that. For sure. Um, so they're like, nobody pay Lamar Deshaun Watson money. Right. But I don't know how they let they let Jimmy Haslam do it, though. I don't know if that's if that's if that's the thing he had to. I, I just don't know. You know, I, the conspiracy theory in all of us wants to say that's what's happening. But I don't know that. I don't know that that's what's happening. Like, maybe, maybe you know, you just don't want to give someone who's been out of the game who's never played 16 games i don't know if he's never not played i don't know if that's a fact either um and, and wh wh if he hasn't it hasn't been maybe might have been some you know other other things i saw a lot of stuff recently that he's not nearly as injury prone as people like to uh point out 12 12 15 15 16 yes yeah, could have been like a covid and uh 
you know, something, something silly, but yeah. you know, so I, I would say buy land, buy, buy Purdy, mostly selling Lance, but there could be a nice little cheap buy window, uh, for Lance. Um, so anything, anybody else you want to, uh, hit real quick before we get out of here on the buy sells. Let's do Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard. Yeah. All right. Because you, you have been taking him in a lot of mocks. Mm-hmm. You've been like scooping up Tony Pollard. I'll buy Tony Pollard for a late one all day long. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So you could get, uh, you could get Zay Flowers. Well, not, 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 a, not, I'm presuming Zay Flowers is going like one seven. One seven? Yeah, one seven, one eight. In Superflex? Yeah. I I think he's going ahead of Levis. So you'd rather have Tony Pollard than Will Levis? I just don't like Will Levis that much. Um Who does? I would probably say I would rather have Levis just because quarterback and Superflex. Um but and he's clearly gone. You know, before Pollard and, and just about all these drafts, I, he- I heard some negativity of Will Levis uh, over the past few days of of uh, his stock going down a little bit. Um, but I would I would sell Tony Pollard for you know one ten, one eleven, one twelve, uh, no problemo, um, all day long. So in this draft he went seven seven. Or flowers. rather buy. Sorry, I would buy Tony Pollard for one ten, one eleven. 112, 2 1, you know, whatever. Uh, Dallas is going to, like right now, Tony Pollard's stock went up. Uh, uh, Elliot got cut, right? right? But they're going to draft somebody. They're going to draft somebody, whether it's Bijan, which it's probably not going to be. Probably Bichon. not Bijan. So, but the, but know, Jerry loves the press. And and I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I'm not, if it's Bijan, I'm worried about yeah. Pollard. There's, after Bijan, I'm not all that worried about it. You know, if they brought in if they brought in a Gibbs, I'd be like, eh, you know. Well, they wouldn't kinda, do that. That's Tony that's the Spider-Man Pollard, Gibbs. right? You know. Oh, where they're pointing? Uh, yeah, the worst one ever. Um, <laughs> you know, Charbonnet, I, I would be in, enticed by. I would like it for Charbonnet. And, right. Uh, but I also, th- I think Pollard needs a running mate. I don't think he needs to be the guy. He showed me enough last year that he can be if you need him to be. But he can also be very valuable. You worry a little bit about Kellen Moore or Kellen Mond leaving and, and the offense that they're going to run. Or not Kellen Mond. Kellen, Kellen Moore. Moore. Yeah, uh, right. Leaving. Mond. And, and, uh, that's Get a, rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was, that, was he at Mississippi State too? Um, I don't remember. I don't know. No, he was at Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Same colors. Go Tigers. We sort of. Him. We would have lost to Texas A&M like I think maybe twice if it wasn't for Kellen Mond. So I love Kellen Mond because he <laughs> fucking sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Charbonnet would be the second worst scenario for Pollard, mostly because I like Charbonnet a lot. Will they take your boy Evans? I'm fine. I think that's perfect. Yeah, I think it'd be a perfect match for. Pollard. I think well, the thing is with it the basically Pollard, it'd so be it'd, it'd be you know I don't I don't want I don't want uh, Bijan to go there and Charbonnet would be like eh I I, I don't like but for Charbonnet to be a rookie Pollard to be on the on the franchise tag and only maybe being one year there I'd be fine with it. So on DLF ADP, which let me see where we have Pollard in our ADP because it can't be anywhere near that. So we have him at seventy nine. And that's uh, what I don't know, eighth round, seventh. But basically, these two drafts I've looked at seventh round. I need to get my math right here. DLF has him at sixty six, so it's like Dallas Goddard, Traylon Burks, Jerry Judy, J.K. Dobbins, Ramondre Stevenson, Javante Williams are all going around Tony Pollard. I'll take all those players. Debo Samuel. I'll take all those players over Tony Pollard. I'm not saying that that Tony Pollard can't be good, and, and but I what I would he say was good. What I would say is that he's not gonna be the guy there. Like if you think Tony Pollard is gonna come in here and be the guy, I, I think you're wrong. 
And I think right now people are maybe thinking that because they just cut Zeke. Well, and he uh, did have a good end of the year. And, and the people could be like, ah, oh, and, and everyone yeah, was she, screaming for Tony Pollard. He just Pollard. had a good year. I mean, general. it took him it took him a minute. It took him a minute to get rolled. You weren't starting Tony Pollard at the beginning of the season, right? And we can we can look at it here. Where is he? Seven, seven. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, here's points per game for PPR. He's RB seven on the year. Yeah, I mean, but it it was four. It was four. Then 20, 19, 19, 10, 10, 10, then one, 1 14, 14, 7, 12, 14, 7. 33, by and then, 21, 36, And then he 36, went off after 81, 40. that. Yeah. You know. Then he went off after that because I think Zeke, Zeke got hurt somewhere around there and he, and he had a real strong finish to the, to the year. So to me, that told me he absolutely can be the guy. He just needs somebody to take a little bit of the, the wear and tear, the banging uh, out of the picture a little bit. He doesn't need to do all of that. Well, um, how much of that was in the receiving game too? You know, I mean, he was he's good in the receiving game, uh, but, he but, he, but he was also he's just here. explosive. Um so I get it. I mean, I don't necessarily want to pay quite that much, uh, but I, I'm okay with him being around a lot of those guys you just mentioned. Like, like I think, we did that breakout video. I think would you take all those guys over Pollard, or you'd rather have Pollard than like Traylon, Jameson? Uh, who else are we throw? Uh, James. I'll take, I, I, I'll take I, Pollard over James Cook for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. I'd I'd probably still rather have Jameson Williams and and Traylon over over Pollard. But then after those guys Pickens. go, I'm, I'm probably I'll I'll take Pollard. Over George Pickens? Probably. I don't think I could do it. I probably have taken him. I gotta stick with my boy George. No, nah, I think I think I think Tony I think Tony Pollard proved to me that that you know, I, I was I was a hater that he couldn't be the man and last last year he showed me that he can basically be the man and he doesn't necessarily have to be the man to be a ridiculous point scoring entity. Um, and and that's what he was. There's got to so, be some regression with that efficiency. I mean, there might be a little bit, but it could be more, uh, uh, you know, even across the board without so much fluctuation. So, so you're buying or holding Tony Pollard? Yeah, I'm not selling Pollard at all. I mean, there there are certainly, like, you know, again, there are certainly scenarios where I have Tony Pollard and I'm selling Tony Pollard because my team is not, you know, I'm I'm he's I'm, 25, I'm a year or two away from being ready to roll so i'll, I'll and he sell. is just on the franchise tag right so he goes to go somewhere else next year so you know in the interim of of my team not being great then i would sell pollard and then when i'm ready to roll I would, i'd you know hopefully be drafting some running backs in the interim who are a little younger and then buy some veterans when i'm ready to go and and compete for a championship um so in most cases if i'm middle if i'm middle of the pack or or upper you echelon mid. i'm fine with with holding or buying Tony Pollard and selling if I'm, you know, bottom third. So, all right. Uh, you know, as we're wrapping up here, I think a buy for me, Antonio Gibson. Hmm. McKissick, Peanuts. McKissick out of here, cut him. Injuries, I think, kind of never got back it's right. old too. Brian Robinson is fine. He's a good, good player. I think Gibson's better. Yeah. Um, More talented you know, for sure. I think, I think, I think he just can't B, stay I healthy think, either. I think B Rob is, is a better grinder. Um, and, and, you know, but I'll, I'll take Gibson in just about every other category. I think between the tackles, Robinson gives them a little bit more continuity potentially, but Gibson just, is disrespected right now. Three twelve in this draft. I'm not sure where where he goes. And so 11, 11 two for Robinson to thirteen twelve in our last draft that we just did. Uh, so you know, nice two round dispar- yeah, discrepancy between those guys. I don't think DLF's DLF's is pretty close. I think, um, but Gibson just seems to be a forgotten man. Still young enough. Uh, you know, still only 24 years old. Don't know when the birthday is. It's not on there. Don't know if he just turned. He can't have just turned 24. So it'll be 25 at some point. But not a whole lot of mileage. Not a whole lot of wear and tear. I think he's just figuring out the running back position. And I think, you know, they're going to have a two-headed monster uh, with those two guys. And, and he's so cheap right now. Nobody wants Gibson. Uh, I'll take him, put him on the team, and see if I can get a, a little, you know, secondary breakout from Gibson because I, I like the talent. I like the player. Um, and, you know, maybe they draft another running back, but, you know, I like 
I like, you know, potentially what the offense could be with the enemy as well. So They're pretty close in DLF ADP. Brian Robinson's at 135. Gibson's at 142. Like Gibbs doesn't He's twenty four point eight years old, so he'll I, I be twenty five. I don't even think Gibbs is somebody that you actively have to pursue to be the main target in your trade. I think you can kind of throw in, leverage him, throw him in, in. in a trade. I don't know if he's quite at throw in level, but I know you you could leverage him in in a trade without him being your main target, and that's that's when I really want to pounce on a guy like Gibson. I think he he's going to give you weeks in this coming year where he he, he could very much help you out um, and. You know, I think this is last year of his deal uh, this year. So he's going to be probably moving on somewhat in the near future. And I think he's he's got enough raw talent and ability and just coming into his own from learning how to play the running back position. Because I like it. So, yeah, he just if he could stay healthy, he's mad efficient and explosive and can make your day yeah. one play. Speaking of making your day in one play, Kadarius Tony. We said it all off season. Go by him. Like he's a nice buy for me. Always be buying. Uh, Darnell Mooney. I think got a a little value down with DJ Moore. I'm still I'm still down to scoop Darnell Mooney. We we did a trade video on him and Cole Komet. Damien Harris is getting disrespected I, late. I got him in the 14th end of the 14th round, and then took Zeke Elliott. I only took I took Bijan Robinson in this one draft as my only running back, and I was just like fuck it I just kept taking wide receivers and then finally like at the very end I took Damian Harris and Zeke Elliott in the 14th and 15th round at the turn and I'm like shit I got like starting running backs here like, yeah we don't know where Zeke's gonna go but somewhere somewhere if he signed with the Bengals and they cut Joe Mixon like Jesus it's probably an upgrade for him yeah but and then on any Samaj ooh, they gotta hold on to Mixon I think he got I think he beat his legal troubles had that shit dismissed. Samaje so. gonna be a nice, a nice little, you know, week to week potential filler, potential even emerge into a nice little role. Where did he go? Denver. Right, right. Samaj, that's a nice throw in scoop. Post type sleeper. Let's Yo, go. We were just like seven years <laughs> too yeah. too early on. Way too early. Samaj AP ride yeah. love. Ricochet Romance. All right, we appreciate y'all. Hit us up on the patreons.com slash the FF Dynasty. Get in some of these mocks with us. Get on the Discord channel. Uh, get some extra shows. We're trying to do we're doing three a month. Three extra shows that don't get released to the pu- public. Uh, if you can't, you know, if you can't uh, come over to the Patreon, hit us up with a subscription on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe this video. Hit us with a like. Uh, go over to the podcast. Five-star review on the iTunes or Spotify. RevelryBrewingCo.com for the FF Dynasty t-shirt. You know, just throw some love. We're putting in work over here, so for your pleasure. We appreciate you. Peace.